sisters, please all stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, our God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. For all things are always alive in Him. And so let us thank the Lord for gathering us this Sunday morning to celebrate this Eucharist. We receive in this Mass, Jesus, the food of our journey, the pledge of our future glory, the promise of eternity, so that we may become less unworthy to partake of the mysteries of God's love. Let us now humbly call to mind our many sins. Let us beg God's forgiveness and let us entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. It happened the seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violations of God's law. One of the brothers, speaking for the others, said, What do you expect to achieve by questioning us? We are ready to die rather than to regress the loss of our ancestors. At the point of death, he said, You accursed fiend, you are depriving us of this present life. But the king of the world will raise us up to live again forever. It is for his loss that we are dying. After him, the third suffered their cruel sport, but put out his tongue at once when told to do so, and bravely held out his hands as he spoke these noble words. It was from heaven that I received these. For the sake of his laws, I disdain them. From him, I hope to receive them again. Even the king and his attendants were marveled at the young man's courage, because he regarded his sufferings as nothing. After he had died, they tortured and maltreated the fourth brother in the same way. When he was near death, he said, it is my choice to die at the hands of men with the hope God gives of being raised up by him. But for you, there will be no resurrection to life. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. Lord, 
My steps have been steadfast in your paths. My feet have not faltered. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my word. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. But I in justice shall behold your face. On waking, I shall be content in your presence. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through his grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and word. Finally, Brothers and sisters, pray for us, so that the word of the Lord may speed forward and be glorified, as it did among you, and that we may be delivered from perverse and wicked people, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. We are confident of you in the Lord that what we instruct you, you are doing and will continue to do. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the endurance of Christ. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and power forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman but died childless. Then the second and the third married her, and likewise all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and remarry, but those who are deemed worthy to attain to it the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, and they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise. 
that the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the passage about the bush, when he called out, Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. For he is not God of the dead, but of the living. For to him all are alive. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, every Sunday and every time we recite the Creed, towards the end we say, I believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Sumasampalataya ako sa muling pagkabuhay ng mga nangamatay at sa buhay na walang hanggan. We are too familiar with those words that sometimes the meaning of those words already pass us. Do we really understand what we are saying? Do we really mean those words when we say, I believe in the resurrection of the dead? I believe in life everlasting. Nahaiintindihan ba natin kapag sinasabi natin, naniniwala ako sa muling pagkabuhay ng lahat ng namatay at naniniwala ako sa buhay na walang hanggan. Our readings this Sunday help us understand this content of our faith. Mahirap kasing sabihing naniniwala pero hindi naman nauunawaan paano tayong maniniwala kung hindi naman natin naiintindihan. Kaya tulungan nawa tayo ng mga pagbasa natin ngayong linggong ito upang sa tuwing sasabihin nating sumasampalataya ako sa muling pagkabuhay ng mga nangamatay at sa buhay na walang hanggan, alam natin kung anong ibig nating sabihin. In our Gospel this Sunday, the Sadducees ask Jesus a tricky question. It is about the resurrection of the dead. And they ask Jesus this question because they do not believe in the resurrection. Kaya sinusubok nila si Jesus kung totoo talaga yung muling pagkabuhay ng mga, ng mga nangamatay, e sagutin mo ang tanong na ito. Isang babae, nag-asawa, pero hindi nagkaanak, namatay ang kanyang asawa. At sa kanilang tradisyon, dapat ipagpatuloy, magkaroon ng bunga. Kaya kung may kapatid na lalaki, yung nag-asawa na namatay, yung kapatid na lalaki ang siyang magpapatuloy ng responsibilidad. E pitong magkakapatid na lalaki ang napang-asawa nitong babae at lahat sila namatay ng hindi nagkakaroon ng anak. Sa muling pagkabuhay, kung meron man talaga ang tanong ng mga saduseyo, kaninong asawa siya? Pag nagkita-kita na sila, sa muling pagkabuhay, kaninong asawa siya? Jesus answered the question by insisting that there is indeed resurrection of the dead and life eternal. But Jesus said that eternal life is not simply a continuation of life here on earth. Hindi yon ang buhay na walang hanggan. Sa muling pagkabuhay ng mga nangamatay, 
hindi nagpapatuloy ang buhay sa mundong ito. Ibang buhay na iyon. It is not a simple continuation of our life here on earth, but eternal life is a better life. It is a greater life. It is a life far greater and better than our life here on earth. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, hindi na concern ng mga tao sa buhay na walang hanggan kung sino ba ang asawa, sino ba ang anak, sino ba ang kapatid. Isa na lamang ang ating concern sa buhay na walang hanggan at yun ay ang ugnayan natin sa Diyos. All our earthly and human relationships will fade once we come face to face with God in eternity. Kaya mas magandang buhay, mas maligayang buhay, mas payapang buhay, buhay na hindi man lamang sumasagi pa sa ating isip dito sa mundo. That is eternal life. And that happens in the resurrection of the dead. My dear brothers and sisters, our faith in the resurrection of the dead and life everlasting should not cause us to be afraid. Sa muling pagkabuhay ng lahat ng nangamatay, sa muling pagkabuhay nating lahat, at pagharap natin sa Diyos sa buhay na walang hanggan, hindi dapat tayo matakot. Dapat pa nga mapuno tayo ng pag-asa at kagalakan. Because our faith in the resurrection of the dead and life everlasting tells us that life on earth is not all there is. Ang buhay ay hindi lamang sa buhay sa mundong ito. And isn't that consoling? Hindi ba maganda at nakapagbibigay ng pag-asa na malaman na ang buhay ay hindi lamang yung buhay natin sa mundong ito? May higit na buhay na inilalaan sa atin ng Diyos. May higit na buhay na naghihintay sa atin. At yon ang ating pinananabikan. Like the mother and the seven, her seven sons in our first reading today. They chose death. They chose to be tortured. They chose to suffer. Then renounce their faith in God. And they would even say, Anyway, life on earth is temporary. We want to attain life eternal. Ito ang pinagmumulan ng ating pag-asa. Our faith leads us to hope. And Christians who have faith in God are people who, has, who have hope. Ang Kristiyano ay taong may pag-asa. Ang tunay na nananampalataya sa Diyos hindi nawawala ng pag-asa dahil alam niya hindi lamang ito ang buhay sa mundo, ang buhay. There is something more, something better, something greater that awaits each one of us. And this is the source of our hope. We look to the future with hope. We look to the future and we are assured that one day there will be no more tears. One day there will be no more sickness. One day there will be no more suffering. One day, there will be no more pain. One day, there will be no more loneliness. 
One day there will be no more depression. One day there will be no more betrayal. One day there will be no more infidelities. One day there will be no more problems. One day there will be no more cross to carry. One day we will just smile because we are facing God in eternity. Ang sarap pakinggan na hindi lamang sa mundong ito ang buhay. Kaya kung bigat na bigat na tayo sa ating buhay sa mundong ito, hindi tayo dapat mawalan ng pag-asa dahil hindi lamang sa mundong ito ang buhay. May naghihintay na higit na buhay sa atin. But my dear brothers and sisters, when we say, I believe in the resurrection of the dead and life eternal, life everlasting, we do not only look to the future, to the better life that awaits us. When we say, I believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting, we should also look at the present our life here on earth because the journey to eternal life begins today. And this is what St. Paul reminds us in our second reading today. If we really believe that there is eternal life, then that belief should govern the way we live today. Kung naniniwala talaga tayo sa buhay na walang hanggan at ninanasa natin na mata mo ang buhay na walang hanggan, ang paglalakbay patungo doon ay dapat sinisimulan na ngayon. Our life, our actions, our attitudes, our values, our lifestyle, our relationships with one another, should reflect our faith in life everlasting. Yung ating pananampalataya ay dapat magpakita, maipakita sa ating pamumuhay ngayon pa lamang. Dahil ngayon pa lamang, araw-araw, sa tuwing tayo'y gumigising, humahakbang tayo unti-unti patungo sa ninanais nating buhay na walang hanggan. That is why we should look at ourselves and ask, is the life I am living now according to my faith in the resurrection of the dead and life eternal? Yung bang tinataha kong landas sa buhay na ito ay landas na magahatid sa akin sa buhay na walang hanggan. Yun bang aking pamumuhay, yung mga desisyon na ginagawa ko araw-araw, yung aking pakikipag-ugnayan sa iba, yung aking pag-uugali, paniniwala, mga prinsipyo sa buhay, ito kaya'y nakaayon doon sa aking ninanais na marating na buhay na walang hanggan. And this is a very good guide in our daily living. Bago tayo magsalita, tanungin natin, ano kaya ang implication ng sasabihin ko sa buhay na walang hanggan? Bago tayo gumawa ng desisyon, isipin natin mabuti, dadalhin kaya ako nito sa buhay na walang hanggan? Ito yung magiging gabay natin sa ating pamumuhay araw-araw dahil may ninanais tayong marating yung buhay na walang hanggan sa piling ng Diyos. My dear brothers and sisters, in a short while, we will once again profess our faith and we will once again say, I believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Tiyakin natin na talagang naniniwala tayo 
tiyakin natin na nauunawaan natin ang ating sinasampalatayanan. Let us look to the future, to the life being prepared for us by God in eternity. And let us wait for that in joyful hope. But let us also look at our present life, our life here on earth, our life today, because our journey to eternity begins here and now. Please stand. Let us all together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. How glorious is the peace and hope of resurrection. Let us pray with hearts set free from foolish doubt or hesitation, because we believe in the promise of the one who rose again in our frail flesh to eternal splendor. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For an outpouring of the Holy Spirit of truth and faith in the Christ, in the church today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations where freedom of religion is impeded by bigotry and ignorance, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For mutual respect and understanding between Christians and Jews and the follower of Islam, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have entered their last hours on this earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have died in sure and certain hope of resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We remember the people who need our prayers, and we also pray for all the intentions offered in this Mass. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of the living, to whom all are in fact alive, Grant the petitions we bring before you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy, that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa pagdalo sa ating misa ngayong umagang ito at sa pagpunta dito sa Manila Cathedral. Maraming salamat din po sa mga kapatid natin na kasama sa live streaming ng misang ito. We thank you for your support to the Manila Cathedral and for your uh, for being part of our online community. We especially thank those who are joining us through DWIZ TV. At maraming salamat din po sa lahat ng li- naglingkod sa ating misa, sa ating mga staff, servants, sa nag-provide ng sign language interpretation para sa ating misa ngayong umaga. At nawa ay pagpalain po ng Panginoon itong bagong linggo na haharapin nating lahat. Nawa ay pagkalooban tayo ng Diyos ng biyaya araw-araw na mabuhay bilang paghahanda sa ating pagpunta sa buhay na walang hanggan. May we live our lives looking to the future, to the future glory with God, but looking also at the present so that our life here on earth may be a good preparation for life eternal. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. May He let His face shine upon you and show you His mercy now and forever. Amen. May He turn His countenance towards you and give you His peace now and forever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you.